Hi guys, today is day three of my birth control series and in this part I'm going to share with you the birth control method, a natural birth control method that I've been using for the last four years and it's completely natural. It's all based on communication between you and your partner and on getting to know your body really well and watching the signs and signals that your body is sending. It doesn't do any harm to your body, it doesn't cost you anything, you don't have to buy any expensive gadgets and it's really reliable. If you do it properly it's actually more reliable than the pill. So let's get started. So I first heard about this natural birth control method from a book written in 1976, a long time ago, but it's still very, very relevant. There have been newer books written about the same subject, but I personally haven't read them because I like this one, because it's like the mother of all of them. I always like going to the origins of any kind of information. And this book is written by Margaret Nortziger and it's called The Cooperative Method of Natural Birth Control and I highly recommend this book. I don't know what it is, but I love old books from 1930s, 1940s, or even 1970s. They used to be so much better. So I really highly recommend this book if you're interested in natural birth control and just more awareness of your fertility. And this method is great because it obviously helps you to prevent pregnancy at the beginning of your life when you're not ready for the next step. However, once you are ready to get pregnant is going to help you do that because you will have a better understanding of your fertility, you will know which days are fertile for you and it's definitely going to help you to get pregnant quicker than other people who have no knowledge of their body. And the next thing why I like it so much is that it actually involves a lot of communication between the husband and wife or girlfriend and boyfriend. So it actually improves the couple's relationship and their bond. It's also the only method that involves both sides. So with things like condoms or the pill, only one of the sides takes all, all the responsibility and bears any kind of health risk, like for example the pill, but in this case it's the responsibility of both parties and they have to communicate together to make it work, which is beautiful. And this method is really just about knowing exactly when you are fertile and just abstaining from any kind of sexual relations on those days really straightforward. So before we get into the details of this method, let's talk a little bit about the female physiology. So I'm sure you know already what ovulation means and that's basically when a female egg gets released from the ovaries in order to get pregnant. Your fertile egg needs to be fertilized by fresh fertile sperm and that's already quite a miracle. But in order for that to happen, it needs to happen exactly during your ovulation or just before or just after. And the thing is that sperm stays fresh for three days, some say even up, even up to five days, and then the egg is fresh and um, available to use, to fertilize, for one day after the ovulation. So that means that you basically have to abstain from sex for three days before your ovulation and one day after. That would be easy, but the thing is we have no idea when exactly we're going to ovulate because not everybody has extremely regular periods and also things like stress and exams like trips uh, or some kind of illnesses where you take drugs like antibiotics, um, they all can tamper with your cycle and make your ovulation happen earlier and that will totally ruin all of your calculations. So that's why we need to give ourselves a bit more leeway, a bit more days to remove that risk of an earlier ovulation. So this natural fertility awareness method is based on three different parts. So the first one is charting your basal body temperature, which is basically your waking temperature. When you wake up early in the morning, uh, before you even get out of the bed, you need to measure your temperature and you can use a digital thermometer or a special basal body thermometer, which is basically just a digital thermometer. And you also need a chart to put all your temperatures on, on the different days in your cycle. And that is going to show you when your ovulation has happened because once your ovulation happens, your temperature goes up significantly and that's how you know for sure that you have ovulated and it's safe to make love. The second part of this method is using certain formulas to find out when it's safe to make love before, before the ovulation, so between the period up to the ovulation. And these calculations, these formulas are based on the rhythm met method. So you might have heard about the rhythm method that is not very reliable and in fact it's not if you use it alone. But if you use it 
in combination with the other two parts of this method, then it's extremely, extremely secure. So the third part of this is really monitoring your cervical mucus and seeing what it's doing because during a woman's monthly cycle, cervical mucus changes all the time depending on the hormonal levels and that's how you can find out whether you are close to ovulation or that it's already happened and you use that to kind of verify your data from your charts and from your formulas. So we use the basal body temperature because as soon as the ovulation happens the temperature rises by quite a lot and that's how we know that we've ovulated and then we know that it's safe to make love. And if you only make love after the relation, it's actually something called the strict method or the hard method because, well, you know, it's hard because it requires more discipline and more constraint from you. However, it gives you nearly 100% protection from an unwanted pregnancy and that is important for most of us. And that basically means that you don't make love before your ovulation, so between your period and the ovulation, you only make love after because it's very easy to tell when you have ovulated from your basal body temperature. My husband and I have been using the hard method for the last four years just because there were times when we really didn't want to get pregnant, we didn't have the right conditions in our life, so we wanted to be sure and that's what we used and it worked really well. But right now we're kind of more relaxed and almost ready to have babies so that's why we have relaxed and sometimes we don't follow the hard method however if you are not in the position to have kids yet i would definitely recommend following the hard method i think it's a good building exercise for your for your character and for your relationship because you know when you actually when you can't get something you actually want it even more so i think I think it's a good thing for any relationship. So the strict method or the hard method is 99%, around 99% reliable, which is a lot. It's actually higher than the pill. And it's only 99% and not 100% because it includes those people who did not apply the method properly. So it pretty much gives a 100% protection if you do it properly, which is amazing with no risk for your health at all and no cost. So let's talk about the formulas, the rhythm method based formulas you can use to calculate your safe days between your period and ovulation. As I said, I personally don't use it, but you might want to use it. So it's basically, you have to take your shortest period in the last 12 months. So let's say your shortest period is 28. Then you subtract 21 from it. And that's when you get the last infertile day in your cycle. So let me give an example because I know it's quite confusing. So let's say your shortest cycle in the last 12 months was 28 days. So 28 days minus 21, you get seven, which basically means that your seventh day of your cycle is going to be your last safe day to make love. The eighth day is not safe anymore. And if you're not sure how to calculate your days in a cycle and I'm only saying that because I didn't know myself. I actually learned it from my phone app just a, a month ago. So you basically count your first day of period as your first day of cycle. And the last day of your cycle is going to be the day before your period starts. So that's how you calculate it. If you haven't been tracking your periods for the last six or 12 months and you have no idea how short your shortest period was, then what you can do is use the kind of safest approach and just to stop making love on the day five of your period. In any case, with all these calculations and charting, always watch your mucus because your formulas might get it wrong. You might be in stress, you might have some kind of a trip and your cycle might shift. So always pay attention to your mucus because that's like the ultimate sign from your body. Always pay attention to that first before looking at the charts and all the numbers. At the beginning of my experience with this natural fertility awareness method, I used to chart every single month religiously and I wish I could show an example but I actually threw them all away because they were quite old already so I didn't think I would need them. Very silly of me, I wish I could show you. Um, but I, should, I used to chart everything, take my temperature every single morning, um, just for a couple of years to really get used to it and to really get to know my body but for the last year or so I've actually stopped doing that because I developed such a good knowledge of my body that I know exactly what's going on just from the signs my body's sending so from my cervical mucus mostly and also from 
for example, when I'm about to ovulate, I get this kind of little like tension, pressure in my ovaries. I'm actually quite tuned into my body and I know exactly when it's going to happen. So in my case, I don't chart my temperatures anymore, but you definitely need to do it at the beginning. You definitely need to take all three steps at the beginning to be sure that you're safe. So now let's talk about the cervical mucus and the signs and signals that it sends. So you can probably notice that at the beginning of the cycle, there's hardly any mucus and it's also quite thick and it's quite opaque. And then when you get closer to your, to your ovulation, it gets increasingly clear and there's more and more of it and there's less kind of matter in it. So it's, it's much more clear. And on the day of ovulation or just before, it's actually totally clear and it's extremely abundant and it's extremely kind of like stretchy and elastic as soon as the ovulation happens the mucus actually goes down a lot again and it's, it's very scarce and thick again right up until your period so that's how you can tell when your ovulation is approaching so talking about the basal body temperature your temperature will rise as soon as the ovulation has happened generally it rises by around 0 0.6 degrees fahrenheit um, and in some people it rises instantly like a jump as soon as ovulation happens in other people it happens in little steps gradually within a few days that's why one simple method is not going to work for everybody but luckily there is a way out so in this case all you have to do is calculate the average basal body temperature of your last cycle and use that average as sort of like a starting point and before your ovulation your temperatures are going to be below that line and then once you ovulate your temperatures will go above that line and in order to be safe you'll have to make to wait for four days so once your temperatures have been above that average line for four days you're safe to make love that's really quite straightforward and luckily you don't have to chart the temperatures every single day of your cycle you actually need to start on the sixth day of your cycle right until the end of your cycle so until your next uh, period starts. However, if your cycle is quite short, let's say shorter than 25 days, then you'll probably need to start charting earlier than day six just to be, to be sure that you catch the ovulation on time. And this is pretty much it. Obviously, I couldn't cover every single detail about this uh, method. That's why I would encourage you to read the book yourself or any other more modern book if you don't like old books. Definitely don't rely on my video because I didn't cover a lot of important things that you need to know before you start using this method. This was just like a starting point for you to understand what the method is like. But if you want to try it in real life, be responsible and really do your research very, very well and be sure to know exactly what you're doing before you start. And of course, also let your husband or boyfriend read um, this book or at least explain the method very well to make sure that they're on board and they're supporting you and that you're communicating well and you'll see that it's going to improve your relationship a lot so thanks so much for watching this video i really hope that you found it helpful if you have any kind of questions about anything relating to birth control leave them down in the comments and i really hope that you're enjoying the birth control series so far i've got one more video coming next week and it's going to be about how to recover after quitting the birth control pill and how to rebalance your hormones naturally. So keep an eye out for that and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.